Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Donald Trump has called him prime time. It's the governor from Virginia, Glenn Youngkin. Thank you for joining me here at the RNC in Milwaukee. Good morning. You know, I I have to say that the uh, Republican National Convention, as we move into day three, uh, has been a real statement. It's been a statement about coming together and excitement. And uh, when President Trump came into the arena on Monday night, and it's the first time that everyone had really seen him um, since the assassination attempt, uh, the place erupted uh, and it was emotional. And I think it does represent not only confidence in the America that he built last time, but the one he can build again. So would you go work for him? Because he says he'd love to have you on the team. Well, it's an incredibly humbling sentiment. Let's be let's be serious. Right now, the job is to win. And uh, Virginia's in play, which is amazing to say. Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points last time. And then we came back and won by two the next year. And uh, all the polls have Virginia locked up tight. So I'm going to go to work to, to, one, be a great governor in Virginia. And then second of all, make sure that we do everything we can for Donald Trump to win. So is there a sense if you flip Virginia and it goes red, you would join this administration? If you were asked to serve your country under President Donald Trump, would you join? There's so many ifs there. Let's let's just start with the, with the work at hand. And and I'm a pretty basic businessman who's become a governor, which is set objectives and let's go meet them. And uh, we set the objectives in Virginia to turn around Virginia's job growth and economy. And we've used all of the tools that we know work. Uh, we have had $5 billion of tax relief. Uh, we've streamlined regulations in a big way. We've built a great workforce and we've invested in our infrastructure. And, you know, we were just ranked uh, the top place for business. And that's because we really are the top place for business. So my job's really straightforward. Set objectives. Let's go meet them. One of our objectives is to make sure that our congressional candidates win in Virginia, uh, that we extend our majority in Washington, and to help Donald Trump win Virginia. You mentioned your business, Acumen. You are part of the business world, the head of Carlisle. What I was hearing is that a lot of individuals on Wall Street were calling the former president, asking him to pick someone like you. Instead, he went with J.D. Vance, someone that sometimes unnerves Wall Street. He's a protectionist individual. He's a populist. He's calling for tariffs one of your biggest importers coming from China. How do you think Virginia would handle, say, 60% tariffs on China and a 10% tariff ring around the United States? Let's first back up. Um, I think one of the things that President Trump has been clear about, and, and we know in the business community, is that free trade really doesn't exist because we've given unfettered access to the U.S. market and and so many other countries actually don't provide reciprocal access to their markets. And let's be clear, U.S. companies do not have access on an unfettered basis to the Chinese market, and yet they expect to have unfettered access to the U.S. market. And so we've got to stand up strong for the United States. On top of that, China is not just a rival. They're trying to dominate the world, and they're trying to do it at the expense of the United States. They use economic imperialism to do it. They saber rattle. And on top of that, they use every ounce to to infiltrate every every bit of the U.S. uh, uh, economy to understand how they can influence it. What that has translated to is a real recognition that we need to not only protect ourselves against China, but we need to we need to fight back. And so the tariffs that President Trump imposed on China when he struck the first Chinese deal were critical in order to rebalance an unbalanced situation with China. And companies that are doing business in China, take Ford, for example. I mean, here's Ford, who has a big market share in China, and then they want to build an electric vehicle battery plant in the United States. And I can guarantee you that the Chinese government put immense uh, pressure on them to use cattle technology in the United States. And now we're seeing that cattle technology is being banned by the U.S. military because they're worried about the influence from the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, this is the way China does business, and we've got to make sure that we are, we're fighting back. Most economists, though, say tariffs are inflationary. So do you think that's the right solution to this problem you don't think is currently free trade on the marketplace? Yeah, I do have to begin with, I, I have lots of economist friends and worked with them for a long time. And well, the Peterson economists, Institute economists says are right and wrong. dollars per every household. They ran all the numbers. Well, I know. People ran lots of numbers at the beginning of the year and said there was going to be five rate cuts this year in in the United States. Come on, let's be real. At at, at the end (laughs) of the day, um, I believe that President Trump will use tariffs in order to make sure that trade is reciprocal and fair. Fair for the United States, fair for U.S. businesses, and fair for the U.S. worker. And that's really important. He also thinks the dollar is too strong. 
Do you think we have a currency problem? Well, I think the first issue we have with our currency reflects the lack of strength, the weakness that the Biden-Harris administration has projected economically around the world. And a weak America invites a strong China. And China has moved right in around the world economically. And all of a sudden you hear once again all of these threats that, that the dollar will not, will not play the role that it has internationally going forward that it has historically. That's a real challenge to the U.S. and it's a real challenge to our economic future. So I think that part of the reason why the, the, the electorate in Virginia and around the country are excited about President Trump coming back into office is strength economic strength, national security strength, border strength. Uh, they're tired of a weak America. They want a strong America. But how do you think he actually fixes that dollar problem? Well, first of all, having an economy that actually works. But that might mean a stronger U.S. dollar. Like a lot of people are looking at what these potential policies could be, especially protectionist trade policies. And they would say, that looks like it's going to be a strong dollar. Well, Does let, the let's Fed be, need to get involved? Does the Treasury need to, you know, maybe buy other foreign currencies? Well, let me, let's, let's go back to core basics. A strong U.S. economy that does not have runaway inflation, which is what the Biden-Harris administration unleashed on America, unprecedented inflation. We haven't seen it for decades. That drives a dollar up because interest rates have to follow. And, and Jay Powell's done a really good job combating uh, inflation. Let's be real. I mean, beginning of the year, there was huge pressure for five rate cuts. And of course, inflation was at nowhere near contained. And he's done a really good job maintaining discipline. We've got to get inflation down, make sure that it is, and then rates will come down and rates will drive the currency. And that's a strong, high growth, low inflation economy that is not allowing inflation to drive too strong a dollar. Well, you said earlier the market was expecting five. Now the market expects one or two. One of them likely before the U.S. election. Do you think Jay Powell, if he is to cut rates for the U.S. election, is being political? No, I don't. I think Jay is doing his job. And as we have seen, the, the Biden economy really falter. Jay's going to react, and he's going to do what he needs to do. And so, no, Jay's not political at all. Jay's doing a great job. J.D. Vance is the VP pick. I want to give you a quote of what he put on his campaign website, black and white, before he ran for the Senate. We're going to raise taxes on companies that ship jobs overseas and use their money to fund anti-American radical movements. Does corporate America have a place in this Republican Party? Well, first of all, let me begin with uh, with J.D.'s nomination. I think he's going to be a great running mate for the president, and I think he's going to do a great job as vice president. And let's be clear, it is Donald Trump's agenda. And Donald Trump is going to set the agenda on the future of our economy and how we are going to build a rip-roaring economy again, just like the one we had in his previous administration. And yes, the, the business community clearly is excited about this. Listen, the stock market ran away over the last few days as it's become uh, more clear that Trump is leading and has a, a better than likely chance of being elected as president. I also think it reflects the, the catastrophe that Joe Biden has been over the last couple of weeks coming out of the debate uh, for the Democratic Party. I mean, there's chaos on their side. And, and, and Wall Street and the markets and business seem to really support this because the market's running away. Um, that's really exciting, I think, for the, for the opportunity to build a strong economy, a strong America, and to put us back where we belong, which is leading, as opposed to really defending weakness all the time. Besides Elon Musk this week, though, no Fortune 100 CEO has come out and publicly linked themselves to back former president in donations. Do you think that's a problem? Well, let's just start with Elon Musk, and you can't just dismiss Elon Musk. I mean, this week he made an enormous statement. hundred. But there's 99 others. $180, $180 million in order to support uh, grass, grassroots ground game efforts to elect Donald Trump in seven battleground states. I mean, this is a giant statement. And I think we'll see over, over the course of the next three and a half months, as it becomes very clear that the momentum that we're seeing today can be maintained, that the business community does want a strong economy. They want a strong leader in, in Washington. They want America to be strong overseas. They, they want a secure border. We need to, we need to combat China, not, not placate China. And this is what Donald Trump's going to represent. And this is why I think American business will be very pleased to have him back as president. You spoke to Trump before you gave your speech at the RNC, at the convention center. What did he say to you? 
Well, I, I called him on Sunday after the assassination attempt, and let's just uh, uh, be clear here. Um, he was millimeters away um, from a very different uh, uh, Sunday than what we had, and uh, I do thank uh, thank God for for His presence there, because um, evil was unleashed in Pennsylvania, uh, and He said that He was changing His speech, uh, and He said He was encouraging everyone else to do the exact same thing, um, to really reflect on unity, unity in the Republican Party, and unity across America, and this is the opportunity we have, which is to bring people together around a common vision, a common vision that unleashes the land of opportunity once again, as opposed to one where the the most Americans have been so concerned economically. Can they write the tuition check? Can they retire uh, as runaway inflation has really eroded, eroded so much of their hard work? Inflation has come down, but certainly it is top of mind for a lot of American voters with but, those prices. Emory, we've we got to be real. Um, inflation has come down from highs that were unprecedented, and it is the cumulative effect of inflation that has made prices so high. Grocery prices up 30 percent, gas up 40 percent. For the average American family, this is really, really tough. Listen, prices aren't going down. They're just going up less, less quickly. That's correct. Glenn Youngkin, thank you so much for your time. That was, of course, the governor from Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, who Donald Trump says is prime time and would love him, Jonathan, and his administration.